All right, Don, it's all yours. Okay, um, I get uh, requests and emails about making splits, and splits are the easiest thing that you possibly can make. So my advice is if you want to make a split, keep your bees in a single, and when you've got queen cells, then make your split. Uh, don't do walk-away splits because you're going to lose a minimum two weeks. Then, if you don't make a queen, like right now, our temperature is fluctuating pretty greatly. It's uh, I'm running 77 or 78 down here, and in the mornings, we was running a 48, and uh, a few days ago, we was running 44. So if you're doing a walk away, and you've got queen cells at the bottom of the frame, and you drop to 44, chances are you're going to get a bunch of chill brood. And you can tell that when you look at the hive and they're, they're dragging out white corpses or white larvas. Uh, that's the biggest thing people don't understand. Make a split when you have a ripe queen cell. If you don't want to cut the cell out, it's easy enough just to take the whole frame and move it to another box, preferably a five frame. And I've talked about junk boxes in past chats and on videos. I've had two students today, which when I said, go over there and put that frame in the junk box, they looked at me in horror. What are you talking about a junk box? You get a frame during the winter or in, in times when your, your honey flow starts and stops and maybe you got a half a frame of drone comb. You got honey at the top and you got maybe four or five inches of, of worker cells and then you got a whole bunch of drone comb. So instead of cutting it out or freezing it and wasting those resources, get an eight frame box or a 10 frame box and set it in the same bee yard. And we use uh, trusses. So you could use a hive stand, say an eight foot long hive stand and set one or two junk boxes up. Everything that don't look good throw it in the junk box. Don't shake the bees off. Just take the bees and the frame, put it over there. And when you get six or eight frames in that box, you come back in seven to 10 days, bingo. Every frame has got five or six cells on it because the bees will pick the good larvas and you might, on a bad frame, you might have a three inch spot where you're gonna have some good larvas. It's the easiest way to make queen cells. We've jumped numbers Actually, we quadrupled numbers since the, the 8th or 5th of March. So this is a fairly new yard, and we are basically booming here. And we're selling almost 25 to two orders, 25 or 225, so which would be 50 nukes on a weekly basis every Friday or Saturday. So people say you can't put a package in, you can't split it, you can't make no honey. Now, my junk boxes are half full of solid frames of honey. And I showed students today, I took a frame that was three quarters of the way sealed uh, honey. And the bottom, two inches or three inches had drone comb. So I laid it on top of a lid and I took a knife and cut off the bottom and threw it in the junk box. Even if it's dripping honey, the bees on the lid We'll clean it up, recycle it in your box, and then when they draw that comb down, they're going to draw all worker cells. So that is one of the purposes of having a junk box. You slowly work out your old combs, you work out your stretch combs. Right now, if you want to produce honey, you want all your comb in there to be pretty much worker cells. And if you've gone through hives through the winter, they're going to make a certain amount of, of drone comb in there. So if you're not trying to make a lot of splits, cut the drones out put, or put it in your drone box and make more splits. It's the easiest, the simplest way. You don't need to spend all this money on making queens. Your next step is if you want to learn grafting, come down to our southern yard on a Friday or a Saturday, one day class. I've already had two young boys there. One was 12, the other was 13. They are grafting first, first go out at it. So we can show you how to ride the bicycle. You're gonna fall off the bicycle a few times, but if you keep practicing, you're gonna ride the bicycle pretty good. 
Now, the 12 year old boy is getting about a 60 to 70% take on all his graphs. So don't think you're too old to graph. If you think you can't see, I got a video up and show you just draw a, uh, take a box cutter, lines of uh, worker cells out of your comb and just push it on a bar. Stand them up vertically and you make some queen cells. So I'm trying to say you don't have to spend a lot of money to make queens. And most people that's got a half a dozen hives, they only need one, five, or maybe 10 cells. So if you took, took 10 cells from just pressing it on a board, on a, a bar, and you get half of them, you got more cells than you want. You can sell them to your neighbors or another beekeeper. So those are two points tonight that you can ask questions on or if you got some other questions. Right now, I'm getting a lot of emails on we can't make cells or we can't split or I'm doing a walk away and we're losing too many bees. These are your, your ways to do stuff now. So speak up, ask those questions and we can show you what we're doing. Okay, first up is Greg Burns from Inside the Hive there. Uh oh, he's Inside the Hive. <laughs> hey guys well the uh the last audio there we had was it was all kinds of feedback and stuff so i just want to again thank don and everyone at dixie bee supply for all their help on helping us have this uh, a successful bee run and all the folks that bought bees uh, uh don i'm sure you probably you don't probably get tired of hearing it but you're probably getting used to hear it about this time of year after everyone has gotten their packages you're probably getting the same messages but a lot of folks have been reaching out uh uh, experienced beekeepers, folks who have bought packages for years, um, a lot of folks who have bought other bees all over the place, but everyone seems to be absolutely floored and amazed with how gentle and how prolific these bees are uh, to where they're completely different than bees they've had in the past. So uh, a lot of folks are really happy with uh, the, the, the quality of the bees here. We one yeah, person was paid for those advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's it's crazy. A lot of people say that, and a lot of people from with different skill sets being uh, experienced too, which which says a lot, you know. Uh, we've been busy uh, getting all of our nukes ready for folks to pick up and uh, grafting and getting queens ready, and I couldn't tell you. Um, well, I could. You, you obviously, I'm you know preaching to the choir here about using capped queen cells to make splits. Um, and it's, it's about this time of year where you see on all the beekeeping groups, uh, people asking and kind of, uh, you know, freaking out about swarm cells and swarms and when's the queen going to leave. And there was a, a question that was posted on the Fat Bee Man group. Uh, when does the queen leave? Uh, and a lot of folks are under the impression that a queen will swarm and leave the hive uh, as soon as they start making queen cells. Uh, and that she leaves well before the queen cell is capped. And so it always kind of blows my mind where that information comes from. That's not what I see in my bee yard. What do, what do you see, Don? Well, uh, there's too much misinformation because there's so much free information. And that's the purpose of doing these chats. I mean, to, to, to give you the bird's eye view of what's going on in that hive is hard to do, but you can have a virgin queen or two virgin queens walking the same hive with the mother. So just because you see they're starting to make swarm cells or queen cells doesn't mean you've lost the queen. You need to look through and do a thorough inspection if you're worried about it and then find the queen cell, which if people don't know what a queen cell is, it resembles sort of a, a peanut, and it's usually a hanging down on a slight angle, a 45 or less, and it usually looks like a, a peanut in the shape and the size of it. And normally, if it's a good one, you can look at your little finger, from the tip of your little finger to the first joint. That is a good, normal queen cell. Now, if you get a long, skinny one that goes a joint and a half, that's an emergency one, and they've overfed it, and it's an old larva. Normally, it doesn't make a very good queen at all. So if you're not that experienced, if you see that long one, I usually crush them down. So that, that's get the best your queens that way. And if you're going to raise queens from your own stock, invest, whether you buy my bees or somebody else, 
Get some different genetics going in there. Don't try to run purebreds. If you run purebreds, you're going to have a little bit more problems with them. So, does that kind of help you as far as the queen cells or, or the way? Yeah, I, I don't know where the, it seems like the, the same information gets recycled year after year where folks think as soon as they see a queen cell starting to get long, even when it's open, mm -hmm. that they're, they're worried their queen is going to, uh, along, and half the bees are going to swarm. And I, and if that were the case, I don't know how, I mean, I've made, I could, you've made bazillions of splits waiting until probably day 14 or even day 15 in the hive, a half a day or a day before that cell even hatches to make the split. So I, I don't know, I, I've never seen a queen in, or a hive swarm uh, within the first seven days of a queen, of a, of a cell uh, being formed before it's, or especially the day it gets capped. It's usually, you know, somewhere between day probably 14 to 16, you know, or a little bit hair after. Yeah. There's always the exception if you're running multiple hives. Like Greg's got a, a bit large yard. We run several large yards. Now, there's nothing stopping uh, a virgin from another hive swarming in the wrong box. And yeah. for some reason, they can go in there. Now, there's a situation where you could have two queens in there, sometimes three. So always be prepared for that unexpected. Thanks, Don. Okay. One yeah. thing people don't see is the techniques that a commercial beekeeper uses out here. And the two students that I had today was experienced beekeepers. Don't get me wrong. They know how to keep bees. And they're successful at what they do. And all they did is come to me is I'm polishing their movements so they can do it more faster. And they are getting the position they want to sell nukes. So I'm going through nukes and I'm pointing out what to look for and what not to do. Now, if you're selling nukes and you're going to run pretty heavy nukes, and if the customer doesn't pick it up when you schedule it, you're going to get queen cups started in there. And nothing freaks a new beekeeper out to pull a frame out. And here's a small little cup there. And the first thing they throw their hands up, I don't want that nuke because it's going to swarm because of misinformation. So I'm taking people who are experienced and saying, all right, here's what you do. Take your thumb. Collapse those little cups. If you've got a queen cell, put it back in the in the nuke. And then you explain to the customer, you can take this box home, you can sell it, or what I will do is I'll pull that frame out and I'll exchange it for a frame of honey or a frame of pollen. Ninety percent of the time, if they have common sense, well I'll take that because as soon as they go home they can take that frame, set it in another box, and they got another split. But people Listen to too much friction or fictional information out there that has no basis to it. So if you're going to sell a new, my thing is I'm teaching students to do is 24 to 36 hours before you have a scheduled pickup. Go through that hive, make sure it's ready for a pickup. And then always, if you do, we do usually 10s and 25s. And on our order today, I had 29 nukes there. And in case there's something I explained to the customer, if you don't like the color of the queen, the laying pattern, if you don't like the color of the frames, if there's anything about the box, I'll get you another one, no hard feelings. But you have to explain to them, once they leave your property, that's their bees, it's not Walmart, they can't bring them back. Because you're dealing with a lot of inexperienced beekeepers and they've got a disease called tinkeritis. And as soon as they get home, they have to go back to that hive and they got to find that queen. There's no need to find the queen. So you point the queen out to them when you, you sell it to them. And you show them the laying pattern. You show them the honey, the resources, the, all the stuff that you need to show them in there. That way you get that clear. So uh, as far as selling nukes now, you should sell everything you put together. I'm giving you a few guidelines that we use, and then you have to explain to them, once they leave your property, that's theirs, and you run your business the way you want. I do not let anybody bring used equipment in my bee yard. 
If you're going to pick up a nuke, you can bring a cardboard box. You can bring new equipment, and we put it in there. If you've got a dead out or dead bees in your truck, don't even come on the property. And it's not that I'm going to be that mean. It's That's my livelihood. And they don't know why the bees died, and I don't want to get foul brood. I don't want to get any kind of diseases. Okay, has anybody got uh, any questions on any of that? Yep, we got a lot of hands up. Yeah, I'm glad we stirred them up today. Next up is Tommy. <laughs> Go ahead, Tommy. Hey, Don. Hey. Hey, first I'll just answer a little bit to Greg's question. Uh, so I, I've actually seen in my yard, I'm, I'm not a, a uh, an amateur beekeeper, but I'm probably a novice compared to Don. You know, I'm sure I am. But I've got about 80 <laughs> dogs are barking. So I run about 180 something five frame newts and uh, been beekeeping about eight years, seven years. And I've seen uh, hives on many occasions in my yard swarm well before cells are close to counts. Like it'll be day, you know, day four or five into queen, into making cells and they'll swarm. Um, so I've seen that. I don't know why it is. Uh, I don't know if it's weather or uh, stress or what, but. But I've seen it happen in my yard, and I've heard others that say they have never seen that happen. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but, but I've seen that too. So I, I don't know what's up with it. Um, well, to, to answer that, uh, you're running numbers like we run numbers. So you cannot judge all your queens are going to come out. If you right. get really good at this, uh, and you've got a good grafter there that can tie them out, you can get all your queens to hatch out within an hour to three hours. So if you've got quite a few nukes going there, you never know if you've got a queen coming out. It could get in the wrong box, land on the wrong box, and the, the pheromones from that new queen will cause another one to start swarming too. Yeah. Uh, it's a common thing. It's something you have to live with. Right. Well, Don, my question for you today, tonight, uh, right now, is I made about uh, 30 splits Thursday, added queen cells Friday um, or yesterday. Uh, but yesterday I noticed yesterday evening they have a lot of like diarrhea on the on the front of the hive and on the top. What do you think? What is that? Is that? I mean, I don't always see this. I've seen it in the past, but it was just odd to me that this time that almost all thirty of them had a lot of diarrhea. Uh, what are you feeding? Fructose or corn syrup? No, I I use sugar. I I feed a two to one. You might be feeding sour sugar. Are you using uh, any bleach in it? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't add bleach. Where do you live? I live in central Alabama. If, you know, you could do what you want, but when we're mixing up that week of syrup, we usually on a tote, which is 300 gallons, we put a cup or a cup and a half of bleach in it. It's not gonna hurt the bees, it's gonna prevent them from getting diarrhea. You could have a case where some of that syrup is fermenting on you. Uh, and then another thing is, how are you building your nukes up? Are you just dropping a frame in there? Or are you just using a frame of honey with a, uh, a grafted cell? Yes. Yeah, so making bees in there? Uh, I, there's a lot of ways to do these nukes now. Yeah, mostly what I did Thursday was, you know, what I usually do is I use, I try to use a frame of honey. If I don't have a frame of honey, then I'll use a one that's got, you know, mixed honey and brood. And then I shake an extra shake of bees in there and it, I'll shake an extra frame of nurse bees in there and then give them a queen cell the next day. Well, if you're using a frame of brood in there and not, you're getting some uh, diarrhea on the front, your temperatures is like ours. We've been down into the 40s. Right. So, you know, they're like us, you know, they could be getting sick from the cold. See, I've covered making splits. Everybody's going to make a split different. We made over a hundred in this past week and all we're using, we drop a frame of honey in there and we put a ripe cell in there and we take, turn the lid upside down. And I did a uh, video on it. I call it putting them down the drain. We take a frame of brood from another hive and we shake it on top of the lid. We only want the bees to go down there. So we have a frame of honey in there and one frame that has, it's a blank, which has got a starter strip on it. And then we shake a frame of bees on top of it. 
And we're doing it in the same yard, sometimes the same stand. And what we want is the field bees to fly right back to the parent hive. And now we got nurse bees in there. So for some reason, if we lose our, our grafted cell, or today we've done some cut cells, if we lose either one, all we risk is a frame of honey. And we stopped using brood to make a split probably 30 some years ago, but everybody has got their own way and what they do. And with the temperature fluctuation, I did a video two or three years ago about, I'm an experienced beekeeper. I'm not the best and I'm going by the weather. And one year we had really warm weather two to three weeks before Easter. So I got brave and I made about 75, 80 splits and I lost every single one. Cause that was the year we had a record Easter freeze. When the temperature dropped down, chills the cells, chills your brood, chills everything. I lost them. So that's another reason I'm doing these things. I would rather try to help you down the road so you don't make those mistakes. But as far as your diarrhea is, the only thing I can think is you either got sour syrup or they got the temperature dropped on you. I don't think it, I don't think I, I mean, I use pretty fresh syrup, but I, I, now that I think about it, you know, with the past two nights have been a lot cooler and uh, that's the only thing different than the past splits I've made this year, you know, is really the temperature. So, mm -hmm. um, Do you yeah, that's probably syrup? what it is. What's that now? Do you taste the syrup? I, I do, yeah. Every, okay. Well, I mean, not all the time, but yeah. Feeding? Are you feeding with jars, high top feeders? How do you feed these? Things? I have a mixture of jars. I have, I've tried uh, Grade Burns buckets this year. Um, I have some high top feeders that are like your old style. So mm -hmm. I've got a mixture of feeders right now. But uh, the ones I've got, the ones that the splits I just made are jars. All right. Well, speed the, I was going to tell you. Usually, if you make them up in jars usually about the second or third feeding on a jar for some reason the glass i don't know if the, the reflection from the sun goes through there it does something to the syrup and it wants to make that black mildew and mold inside the jar and if you don't wash them out almost every time or at least every other time sometimes that seems to give you a little diarrhea they'll get the brown squirts on the front of the hive or the green squirts yeah yeah but all right don I would think that it would be more your syrup. I would check on that syrup, make it a little thicker, add a little more bleach to it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. Over to Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew. Hey, thank you. Hope you can hear me. I just said my bandwidth yep. as well. So I feel like every time I talk, it's an episode of what the heck did I do wrong this time? <laughs> it's um, a but, learning curve. By the, by the conversations, it sounds like I'm not the only one. So, I'm new to making splits and I only got two hives right now and I split it. Well, I had one hive, I split it, it was really packed and I was looking to get queen cells. Last time I checked, I have eight really cis because three of them are kind of clumped together. But the, the three day forecast, I need this to get them tomorrow because they're supposed to hatch Tuesday for start, but we're getting 36 degree weather at night and just miserableness. So. I mean, I'm stuck with these cells. So I just cut my losses and make one or, you know, two or three bigger splits with two frames of bees, or do I just take my chances? What would you do in that situation? Well, I don't know how you're making your splits. How many hives you say you had? Two? I, right now I have two. Yeah, not many. So no. what are you doing? Doing a 50-50 split on each box? Yeah, I, I had one hive. I packed it really well, um, and then I split it, took the queen, took – four frames, you know, moved her. And then in that same location, I just left them queenless to make queen cells. See, you're uh, losing five to six weeks there. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I was doing it to just kind of learn. Just well, that's um, two hives is an expensive learning thing. I mean, yeah. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but no, you, you know, I keep saying the same thing. Use a frame of honey. What are you running? 10 frame stuff? Uh, five frame. Are you running all five frames? Yes. And you're going to split? I would just use a frame of honey and a queen cell. You can cut the queen cell out. Make sure it's about, you know, 12 to 13 day after you see it, you know. Uh, and then you don't want to put a lot of bees. You don't want to pack them. And you certainly don't want to use brood. See, if you've got a queen cell and it's sealed, 
there's no need for the bees to feed it no more. You only need bees to keep it cool. And when you put brood in there, you're defeating the purpose. Because the bees are going to decide, do I want to keep the brood warm or do I want to keep the queen alive? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they're going to migrate to the queen cell and half of your brood or half of your eggs in there are going to get chilled. Yeah. And you see dead bees, dead larvae out for the hive. Yeah. Uh, and where do you live in that? Uh, Pennsylvania, southeastern. Well, there's two or three people close to you. I got students up there. I would get a hold of them, find out when they're going to have queen cells that's ripe, or if you only got two hives, buy a couple queens. Put one frame in a hive with a made it queen, and then right. you could go from two to ten or twelve, you know, basically overnight. Right. No, I'm, I've been talking to Ernest, and, and we, I'm going to buy a couple nukes from him if he still has them and, and get queens from him, but I'm, you know, I screwed up. I'm trying to learn. So. Yeah. You, you want to limit your losses, and that's one thing here is discuss what you're doing here and try to save you some money. Yep. All right, well, thank you. Okay. okay, over to Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Hi, I want to know what it means. I did a, a hive inspection today, a complete inspection of all five of my hives. I pulled out every frame, looked at them, put them back. One box in particular had an exceptional amount of drone brood and drones in it. And what does that mean? It was like half of the frame was all, the bottom half was all drone. You could have bumped your queen, uh, causing her to start to lay drones, or they might be so packed with bees, they're preparing to make a swarm. Uh, well, it was very packed. In fact, I, it's a 10 frame box. And on that one, I added another level on it today. Well, do you want to build numbers or are you trying to make honey? I want to make honey. All right. So get you a junk box and take that frame out with the bees on it. Uh -huh. Get in a junk box. Okay. And then what's going to happen is they're going to make queen cells there. And you're not pushed for time. If you got two or three other ones, go through there and take out all the frames with the bees on it and put okay. it in the junk box. You're going to get a percentage of them that's going to fly back to the parent hive. We covered that on classes today. Mm -hmm. I had a student that want to make honey. I got one that wants to make bees. So it's a different technique. And that's where he was surprised when I said a junk box. Yeah. We went through that hive and everything that had more than the size of a dollar bill, don't co the comb on it. We put it in the junk box and put good comb from other hives that was all worker size. Absolutely none drones on there. You might find one or two drones on a frame. Okay. Now, what you do is you increase your workers there, see? Not feeding drones, and you're going to make more honey. Okay. You can and I want to tell you... An extra hive that way, and then if you've got cells on that, then you can make some splits from the cells. Okay. And I wanted to tell you also, a couple weeks ago, I, I brought up that I had my swarm traps out, and I had wasp in them. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually caught a swarm, and I bedded it this week. Yeah. So, yeah, it worked out great. And I, I, that was one I got in too. It's actually been a week ago that I brought it back to my yard and it's doing really well. So I was tickled. I mean, this is a learning thing. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers. All I'm trying to show people is, hell, I made a lot of mistakes and don't make the same mistakes I did. I'm trying yeah. to save you some money and time. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. Over to Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Hey Don, Yay. I I have a I have a hive up north from me that survived two winters. I haven't been in the hive in two years, and I want to make splits off of that because I want to keep those generics. What would be a way of uh, splitting that hive a few times? Well, how far is it from where your your residence is? Uh, it's about a half hour away. Well. I would just take it. You can either pull the queen out of it with a frame of brood and let them make their own. If you got plenty of time, you can get the genetics. And then remember, just because you got good genetics and that doesn't mean you're going to have genetics in the queens, because what is in the area is your drones that you're going to have to mate with. Well, I'd I'd make the splits 
at the location where the hive is now and leave them there. But you don't know what kind of drones is going to mate with those queens. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. It's a yeah. gamble. You know, sometimes it works out good. Sometimes it's a fluke in the, in the area. Yeah. I'll, I have to go through that hive. I, I want to even see. I doubt it's the original queen that's still in there. I mean, she was mocked, but I'll take a look for it. Yeah. Oh. Well, if you haven't been in that hive for two years, it's might have, more than likely it's probably swarmed a few times and you just think you've got a good overwinter queen. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll have to go in there and take a look at it. That's one thing. One of my students, which was an experienced student, and he made a remark which it stunned me. He produces honey, and I was showing him how to produce more honey by going through the hive. And he says he only goes to the queen excluder. He's never been below the queen excluder in five years. I said, well, you don't know what's down there. It might be a horror station down there. You don't know. See, he don't know if there's drone comb down there. He don't know if he's got wax moth, beetles. He just don't go past that queen excluder. Huh. Just because somebody give him information at a bee club, they said, if you're going to make honey, just you don't have to inspect nothing below that queen excluder. Just pull your honey, put new supers on it, and go about your business. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I mean, yeah, see, you know, you, you got to know what's going when on. When people come, I have to unlearn bad techniques. No, I mean, it's like you said, though, you don't want to get tinkeritis and be in there every uh, couple of days. But, you know, you do have to go down there and check yeah. things out. Well, you probably heard me before. You produce honey. And I keep telling people, if you're going to produce honey, every 14 days, complete inspection. Yeah. That way... If you're doing a good complete inspection, if they are going to swarm on you, then you can take those cells and make splits. Because yeah. people don't understand if you want to produce a lot of honey, you've got to have a bang up hive and it's ready to swarm any time. So you're borderline swarming all the time. So for some reason, if a honey flow shuts down on you, they make queen cells, you're going to lose a lot of bees. But if you're going in every 14 days, you take advantage of nature and make your splits thin. Yeah, I agree with you on that. All right, thanks. Okay. All right, over to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a, I wish I was down in your area. I had a bunch of cells I needed to put out and it got down to 32 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of rough. Uh, what's the advantage? I figured it's going to get cold, so I just kept my incubator and Hashed out a bunch of virgins, and I kind of liked it today. I put them all in, never had any problems. What advantage would the virgins over the cell be? If you mean in your incubator you had virgins and you just came? Yeah, I didn't, wanna, I didn't want to put them out there. I knew the temperature was down, and I had some small frames. I didn't want to take a chance of wasting the cell, so I just let them hatch out. Uh, put them well, in today, and they went real well. You can take, uh, if you got a hive, and we've done it in the past, if you've got a virgin queen, and it hasn't been in the hive before, we have direct released them in hives that we know that, let's say we went down the rows and we pulled out queens, we, we flip our lids over so we know where we're going back, and we usually wait an hour, and you can put a virgin queen in a little walk in, and majority of the time they accept it. But now your point is cold weather, if you got a handful of bees in there and you got a virgin put in there, even with a cage, they're gonna do, they'll give their life up to protect that queen, whether she's made it or virgin. Yeah, I just uh, I direct released, mm -hmm. I checked and they they were friendly, yeah, and never had a problem with any of them. Um, I heard the same rumor before that Greg was talking about the queen cells get capped, they swarm. <laughs> One suggestion, and <laughs> Don's right, but if you're really worried about it. Check the queen, see if there's any eggs, see if she's shrunk. If not, cut them cells, go on, she's staying. <laughs> and that's what I do. I had one out of a bunch, and she'd already shrunk down and quit laying eggs. I moved her, made an artificial swarm, and the rest of the time, I don't have to worry about it. But just what I was thinking. I didn't know if what advantage would be on the virgins versus the cells, and I was just going to ask you about it. I kind of like it. I don't have to guess about the cell. The thing about your virgins is uh, if you cage them up and keep them in an incubator too long, the longer you keep them, I think you have less likely to have good mating on your queens. I was okay. just, I think they, well, the last one, 
Well, they come out this morning, and about three hours later, they were in the nuke. Yeah. You know, they's all within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. and so, I don't know. I just wondering what you thought about it, or are you just better off time-wise to put the cell in and go on if you got a bunch of them? Well, if you're doing numbers, I mean, a large amount, you know, put the cell in it and move on. Okay. So that's, that's what you have to do. But if you've got virgins, you know, coming out, I would direct release them. I would go around to every hive you got a laying queen, and I'd pull the laying queens and then and wait an hour and then introduce those virgins. They have a higher rate of success than if you try to store them or bank them for a while. Okay. Well, it seemed to work this morning. I kind of liked it. You can at least look at the virgins, see if they're healthy, and mm -hmm. just checking it out and see what you thought. Yeah. Well, sometimes my opinion don't mean nothing for a lot of people. I, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I wish I didn't make those mistakes. <laughs> I'm trying to pass on some of that knowledge to people to, to maybe save them a, a dollar or two. I wish I'd heard about you 30 years ago. That would have helped me. I'd have been retired with what I wasted. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Don. Okay. okay. Over to Robbie. Go ahead, Robbie. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. All righty. Um, we, t we had a portal vortex right now. Um, We've been up and down, it's been rainy. I live in Maryland. Um, I'm not at home right now. I have packs of bees, end of April. Um, is it safe to keep the, uh, the feeder on, the, um, on my hive or should I take it off because the temperatures are pretty cold at nighttime? If you got honey in the hive, I wouldn't be feeding them if the temperature is really low because you can actually, from feeding them too much syrup, you can drop the temperature inside the hive because they're going to evaporate a little bit of the moisture and it's going to act as a cooling effect. All right. I, I'm going to tell mom to keep the, the um, feeder off yeah. until it warms up. Yeah. Plug the, if you're doing a, like a jar feeder or a high top feeder, be sure you close your hole up. Okay. I did ask her how does the bees. She said they're buzzing. She said that to me Thursday. Well, there's portal vortex. Should it, would it make any difference if they was buzzing pretty good Thursday compared to now? I don't know. Basically, the bees that I got, and I'm not bragging anything on them, but I noticed my bees fly between 41, 43 degrees, they fly. Providing you don't have high winds, they come out, and they use the bathroom, or they go out and maybe get a little water and something. They don't fly heavy, but you do see some coming in and out. Okay. Down here, it was 49, 48 when I got up in the morning, and it was 49 when I went out in the yard. And we already had a good stream of bees coming out of all the five frame boxes. All right, we're gonna be 40s tonight. Yeah. Well, um, you're not getting in your hive, so I wouldn't worry too much. The temp, the bees can take cold weather as long as you keep them dry and they're not putting moisture in there. Well, we it's been rainy. It, for a while, we're in a wet, rainy pattern right now. You got them up off the, the, the ground a little bit? Three cinder blocks high. Okay, you're okay. You're about 24 inches. Yeah. Okay, I'm going, I did ask for pictures of the bees. I haven't got them yet. So as soon as I get them, I'll send it to you guys. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, over to David and Tracy. Go ahead, guys. Hello, E. Hey, uh, Don, how are you doing? Pretty good. Good, we're, uh, we're coming to see you next, uh, next week, finally, after all the delays, so. Uh, Looking forward to it. Well, hopefully no one's getting sick and we've had, you know, students, we've had customers in and out and we're, you know, we're a little shy on hugging this time of the year and, and that, but you know, we're we're pretty healthy down here, and you know, we're working probably three foot or four foot apart, you know, so you shouldn't have no problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, strap the furniture down and put your valuables in the safe. 
be sure you got your your smoker and your veil and if you're going to catch queens you know get some latex gloves and that or if you you know what you need to, to work okay and very if, good if you're buying queens you know let us know ahead of time because a lot of times students come and at the last minute they decide they want to buy a half a dozen or a dozen queens See, I'm running my bees there, and my son runs out of the same locations. So if I can't fill an order up, then I find out if he's got some. See, he's setting up a couple hundred hives almost every other week. You now, he's got me. He's a lot younger. He can do a lot more. And, and I'm trying to slow down and do more teaching than I actually work in beehives. Great. But we're looking forward to it. And I did have one question uh, about mating nukes. I was starting to build your design of mating nuke. And, uh, and I, I noticed I had a bunch of extra mediums that I'm not really using now. So I, I, I put a divider down the center mm -hmm. and then put a frame of honey in and a frame of pulled wax and queen cells and, and just a you know, shake or two of bees in there. I haven't been back in for about a week. But have you ever seen that design work? I got a bunch of them in my basement, uh, and I tell a lot of people that are on 10 frame stuff, deeps or mediums, if they want to do the five frame uh, nukes, drill a hole on one side and drill a hole on the opposite side and take a router and build you a little block out of plywood or something so that that bit comes right down the center on the inside and get you some of them political signs make sure it goes all the way to the top of the box and far enough into the rabbit that it covers your frame rest. Or you'll have bees right. come from one side of the hive to the other, kill the other queen. Yeah, yeah, so I plugged that hole and... Go they ahead. work fine. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to, so, but, I, but I'm starting to build yours as well. So uh, getting a little bit of experience there, but thank you. Are you going with the mini nukes or are you going with the standard 19 inch long frames? Right now you're doing the well, the, you're doing the 19 inch frame, right? Yeah, for for your design, I'll I'll do that for sure. So there'll be more of the minis. But I was using a uh, just cutting an eight frame. Well, I was just dividing an eight frame medium in half, yeah. and then just uh, using the 19 inch frames. If both years are working, I would suggest using the full 19 inch frames. If one years are going to be there, then go with the mini frames, which is a six and a quarter. You cut the frame in half, and then you got half a frame, and they're basically for mating queens. That's you know, okay. they're, they're higher maintenance than the five frame with the divider in it. You can be yeah. have a job and go back there, check them once a week, and you can kind of keep up with them. Okay, all right, good, thank you. All right, okay, over to where to go, Ernest. You got to mute it on your end, Ernest. There you go. Okay. Good evening, Don. Good evening. Yeah, I wanted to ask Paul, uh, when do you put your Ross rounds on? Uh, you wait till the honey flow starts or you get on a little before? I'm waiting for the honey flow to start. I'll probably put them on during the fruit bloom. Okay. Yeah, I haven't put mine on yet. I want to try that this year. So. Uh, well, though, with the weather we're having, I don't know, uh, might be a little later this year. <laughs> yeah, we had 32 uh, degrees this morning, so uh, I don't know yeah. about the, the ones I tried to split and so forth. We'll see what we have when the uh, weather comes back, I think, on Thursday, so we'll see how it goes. See, Paul had a picture with snow on the ground. I had students here with shorts working 70 some degrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, yesterday I cut the grass. Today I shoveled the deck off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it variety. But Ernst, Ernest, I might, uh, I might wait for the honeysuckle to bloom. I don't know. I'll see. Yeah. So I haven't been in the hives in a few weeks. I want to see how, uh, how they built up. So. Well, mine has been radicated because of the weather. You know, I get so many of them done, then the weather changed, I can't get into them. And uh, then I get a few more and I've had four swarms already and I've caught them, I've boxed them. So uh, 
That's yeah, a, a good thing. I can't, I I can't believe you had swarms already. I can't see it happening over here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andrew was asking about uh, about queens or queen cells. I've got uh, uh, queens now. If he's interested in queens, and if anyone wants uh, uh, medium nukes, I got about thirty overwintered uh, mediums. I've sold out of deep. So I don't have the deeps, but I got the medium. So uh, if anyone's interested or interested in queens, I have those also. So uh, and uh, Mr. Zirkel's here. Uh, George was asking for you last night, uh, John. He was. Yeah, they miss you. Oh, no. <laughs> Ain't nobody misses old man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess that's that's all I have right now. I'm, uh, I'm glad you're doing good there, Don, and uh, not catching any of these viruses going around. So that's a good thing. The worst thing down here is I noticed when some of the plants change and there's certain things that makes my nose run and then four or five days later that it's gone. But we're in a major, major honey flow right now. The privet is wide open. We got the sheep sorrel we got some bluebells we got a bunch of i think the hen bit is still coming up we're, we're actually pulling honey out and setting it out trying to get them to rob and, and clean the honey up uh people that's been listening when we uh, i just bought this property down here in crawfordville and we took possession of it uh, i think it was in october maybe or the end of september and we had to buy from one of our students, we bought 100 packages and we put 90 packages on this property. Now, since November, I took uh, March 1st, we, we cleaned the property up, we set our stands and stuff up. March 1st, we bought our packages from one of our students. We put 90 on this property and 10 on the property up in Lula. Now, people keep saying, you can't make no money, and there's no money in this, and there's no money in that. Well, if you'd look at students and talk to my employees, we've got two full-time employees. We took the 90 packages. We're running 225 hives now. In the last four weeks solid, there's been 25 nukes go out, and two weeks ago there was 50 nukes on this property. That ain't counting how many uh, queens that we've sold. I think today we sold off of this property, I think we sold 15. Now my son has got his yard about a mile from my property and he's running 15 mini, 1,500 mini nukes there. And then he's running 450 about a mile down the road that is basically hives that he's selling nukes from and he's shaking packages from. So people keep saying there's not enough lamb. They can't make no money. There's a lot of BS out there. So watch if you don't believe talk to students uh, Dwayne is sitting there and I he'll tell you he's seen it in his own eyes and uh, Walter Mr. Walter was down here with his son uh, Kelly was down here uh, twice since uh, we got this property and you know it's not what I say ask students that's been here I mean it's it's a fact get some bees make a living at what you enjoy to me it's not a job I work day late to dark I never look at it as a job. I enjoy what I do. Yeah, I'll testify to that, Don. Uh, I've been down there twice, and uh, every time I come down, I learn something new. And uh, and uh, I want to say something to David there about the uh, nukes. I have uh, nukes, and I've uh, overwintered medium nukes. Mm -hmm. You got to have sugar on top of them, you know, or something on top of them so they can get up to it. But I've overwintered the uh, uh, several and uh, many of the deep nukes I've overwintered, just a single deep nuke. So you don't need a lot of that honey. Matter of fact, I've had a couple people come after hives died out. They had so much uh, real estate and honey in there. They died out with a whole uh, top full of honey. So they just had too too much on that. So they don't a matter of fact, this medium come through and it had a frame and a half of honey left over. Yeah. So you you can overwinter uh, 
uh, nukes and even a medium nuke. And I mean, that, that's getting pretty small, but uh, the main thing is not have it full of honey. If it's full of honey in the bottom, they can't cluster. Yeah. Then, then they'll die. So. See, that's one thing we're doing right now. We're in such a major honey flow. I'm actually going through the hives and pulling honey out so the queen has a place to lay. Uh, I don't know how the rest of the year is going, but right now, I don't want the honey in there. In fact, those two students, uh, we've got about seven hives behind the house there. And I said, well, you're going to break that down. So he grabbed one deep eight frame. He says, oh, I said, you know, you see that sound you make? That's why I don't do honey. So right now we have to pull the honey out so the queen has a place to uh, lay. But we're taking a frame of honey, dropping it in, and putting the queen cell and shaking some bees in it. And that's how we're making our splits. We're not risking no brood at all right now. So yeah, another way to look at things. That's what I wanted to do with these uh, queen cells, but then they had fell on me. So now I got the, uh, I got the virgin queens up there, and the weather's too cold to do anything. So. You can't control the weather. I'll have more next week, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it, Ernest? Okay, that's all I have now. Thank you. Okay. And let's see, over to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> well, uh, for Linda, uh, every year, Leon and I go to one or two different places and hear uh, doctors of beekeeping and different uh, speakers, Michael Palmer and that kind of thing. And we've been down to Don's and all. But one of the guys that I heard one time, he said, when your hive is really big and strong and they got a lot of drones, he said that drones produce what they consider a happiness pheromone and a strong hive makes more drones because they're uh, everybody's fat and happy and that happiness pheromone is up high so they make more drones to balance it out. I thought he was one of those wackos but I, I always liked the thought of the drones doing something in the hive. Um, <laughs> but one thing that I would advise people that are starting to try to learn how to make queens, get a calendar and make notes on the calendar how many days before that queen is going to emerge because you think when you're first getting started, you got it figured out in your head. But something happens, the phone rings and you get sidetracked and forget to do it that day and those queens emerge, you've missed an opportunity. If it's raining, you can put up a pop-up awning and uh, put queens in that way. But a calendar is really helpful when you're first trying to figure everything out. Um, and then um, Ross rounds. Mine are doing really good. I've got them on three different hives. And um, one hive went right on them and started drawing out the comb. Like within a day, they had, you could see where they were pulling, you know, pulling the wax out. One of them never really seemed to take to them. They put honey down in the brood chamber and didn't pay much attention to the Ross round. So I put that box on the hive that they were doing so good with them. Um, but they're doing really well. I'm looking forward to seeing how they are when it comes time to harvest them, but so far so good. But I put mine on a few days before I thought uh, nectar flow was going to start because first of all, the weather was is so iffy here right now. It's 30 degrees tonight and frost and freeze warnings and all that. So and it rained, we had three inches of rain last Friday in about two hours time. So, I mean, we just got crazy weather too. Um, but I put mine on a little bit ahead of time to get the bees to get up in there and be, you know, crawling around on them and getting used to them. Cause I wasn't sure how they were going to take to them. I know everybody says they work, but until you do it in your own yard, you're just not really sure how it's going to run. Um, so I put them on a few days ahead of time. And uh, like I said, they're doing great. Um, they're pulling in, and it's all honey. I haven't put any uh, honey in a high top feeder or anything like that. It's just what they're bringing in from the wild. Uh, and with all the rain and cold and everything, they're still bringing it in and putting them in at a pretty good pace. And they haven't done any uh, cross combing or anything, which was another thing I was afraid of. <laughs> I know Paul said his bee's done good, but 
they're bugs. You don't know what they're going to do from one yard to the next. They they the behave differently. Round, usually, they don't do much cross comb in, in Yeah, round. they didn't. No. Yeah, they they've done real good, and I I wasn't sure how that was going to go. I was afraid I'd go open it up and it'd be a big mess. But how are you doing your Ross rounds? Do what? How are you doing your Ross rounds on eights or fives? Both. I did some the of both. Doing this, better. Uh, what are you going to say, Leon? Oh, uh, it's it's about the same. The one five did really good, and one five didn't do so good. So that was the one that I. I put it over the same amount of bees, the same strength of the hive. They just, I don't know. Are you using a queen excluder? No, I, and I always use them, but this year I didn't with the Ross rounds because I was afraid they wouldn't go up there. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't, yeah. And and they're doing great. It's working really well. Uh, if one's doing it and the other one's not, there's something else that's going on. You got a lizard or anything up there on the hive? Not yet. Not <laughs> but, yet cold for the lizards <laughs> but that's a good possibility we did consider that we looked all around to see if there were spiders or and sometimes we'll get uh those little green tree frogs with the sticky toes you know mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll get them under the lid and so we did are you using uh screen bottoms on those or are you using solid bottoms i use screen bottoms on everything good. and i know i know you told me not to but uh for where my location i cannot stand to see the little wax larva and the small high beetle larva, you know, in the solid bottom board, they'll get up in the little corner. And I'm, I have a weak stomach. I can't stand that. So. Well, I'm trying to figure out why uh, you're doing the same time frame and the same technique. Yeah. And, why one and they're doing... side by side on a, on a high stand. That was the thing that surprised me too. Queens all figured... the same age, everything? Yeah. Yeah. Same strength of hive and everything. One just they didn't really take to it, and the other ones have gone on. Now, I did have one question. When I go to harvest the Ross rounds out of the canisters, do you do you take a knife and run? How do you get them loose to make sure that you don't break open the wax? What you have to do is you pull them out as a unit. There's a frame that's actually two halves, and then your mm -hmm. units slide in there, and you have to pivot them around the locking place. Mm -hmm. So usually the ones in the middle are going to be sealed good and all you have to do is stand them up vertically and take a high tool or a butter knife and at the end of the frame there's a little slot there pop them apart and the the pieces are going to stick together all you're going to see is where your comb was laying there you take a butter knife and go around the circle and trim that excess wax off and then you can snap your lids on now some people like to freeze them before they sell them I have people that want them natural, so we don't freeze ours. And then when you pull Ross rounds, don't use much smoke at all. Because so they don't get smoky. Yeah. Yeah. Steven yeah. didn't think about it, and he had a customer, and he took some over there, and the guy couldn't sell it because he tasted barbecue. Yeah. So why do they freeze them first to keep the, uh, like, small high beetle larva from hatching out? From uh, uh, wax moth. But see, uh, wax moth, you know, you better be keep long enough that well, wax moth is only on a hive that's neglected mm -hmm. and it's a weak hive. So if your hive has any strength and you're telling me you're making Ross rounds so you don't have wax moth in there. No, no, I don't have either one. Yeah. I was inspected last week. I didn't even have um, mites. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the mites can't even stand our weather right now. It's too cold and wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but they're doing great. Um, so I'm pretty happy with them so far. I'm, I'm thinking definitely next year we'll be doing more. It's a big investment money-wise because, you know, you got to buy the, the parts and pieces to get started with them. If you're going to buy them, buy them bulk. They come in big boxes and buy the, the, the frame separate. Don't buy them as a kit. Right. Yeah, frame, we did. We, the last that we bought, I think they run at $1.50 a piece per frame. That includes both halves. Now your rings are running. I think we bought them in boxes of four hundred, and yeah, so uh, yeah. I'm thinking they're less than six cents a piece. I yeah. think we figured up it's about twenty five to twenty seven cents per unit to produce them. Now mm -hmm. make the labels yourself, or you can buy the uh, pressure sensitive ones. Some people like to print their own. 
Uh, Virginia has label laws. You have to have a particular amount of uh, information on them. Yeah. So I have them printed. Yeah. It's just easier. Yeah. So, yeah, they're doing great. I'm real happy with them. Um, I would definitely recommend them and do them again. And I know they'll sell because I make cut comb or chunk honey from my top bar hives and I can't make enough and it sells for double. Yeah. So, yeah. How much do y'all charge for Ross Round? We wholesale ours out usually in lots of 500 or 5,000. And we have customers that prepay for them in advance. You know, and they pay shipping there. Wow. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not average. making 500, so how much would I charge for one? <laughs> well, we're averaging a minimum of 1250 wholesale on the rounds. That's eight ounces. Okay. Of money. But he's buying in bulk, a lot of it. Mm hmm. Now, if you're going to sell it like Paul's doing at a health food store, health food stores, you should get 20 to $24 per uh, ring. Yeah, I'm thinking probably 24 25 because yeah. uh, my one-pound bottles are 15 20 So, yeah. Well, see, okay. we, we don't cater to ones and twos in small amounts. Like right now, we set down for our business plan. We're only selling fives and 55s this year as far as honey. Now, the only breakdown we have is uh, uh, for medium frames, we sell it by the frame honey, $100 a frame, $150 for a deep frame of solid honey. Yeah. I sold a couple of those last year. That was uh, well received. I was yeah. a little afraid. Yeah. You know, that first time you say, I want $100 for this, yeah. you're kind of like, what are they going to do, laugh and run or what? And they were tickled that it was oh, not yeah. any more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. I put a lot of that information out and people think I'm pulling her leg, but listen to what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Paul and start talking about it now. Now, now yeah. he's the Ross Round King up there. Yep. Start <laughs> telling your customers you're going to have it ahead yeah. of time too, so that they're preparing for it. But um, I have a lot of people that are, um, have a lot of allergies. Their kids right. have a lot of allergies. So they want that raw honey and they really like having a frame. They thought that that was real, more real than a bottle. <laughs> well, they're, they're buying these little frame holders now, and they put them on the kitchen table, and they like yeah. to eat their breakfast. Yeah, yeah. They sell really well. I was, oh, yeah. I was pleased with that last year. I did try that, and it worked. So, if you're going to sell it by the frame, though, and you know you're going to have customers, my one suggestion I would make is buy new frames every year. Yeah, we do new, new wax, frame, uh, old frame. Yeah. The ones that uh, I sold, it was new frames and no foundation. It was all raw That's, wax yeah. and everything from the bees. It was just the frame, the bees and everything else. And and that's what was the selling point, was the fact that it was the bees wax and the bees honey right. with no foundation or anything artificial in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Paul, yeah, do you want to chime in? Definitely see how you uh, you do with selling them, Pat, and then buy your rings and your covers and buy both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this year was a test. I, I didn't know how they would work. And I, I always like to get my feet wet a little bit at a time. <laughs> and so this was and I'm, I'm real pleased. So I'm definitely going to be buying. But where am I? What, where am I going to put 400? <laughs> you you got to put that box somewhere until you're ready to use it. And that's our problem. I've got my barn, my grain silos, my extra bedroom, the attic. I'm out of space. <laughs> Well, if you're going to start making money with bees, you're going to have to buy in volume in order to get a price, you know? Yes. Yeah. I realize if, that. Yeah. <laughs> we're buying like pallets full of, uh, we used to cut our own bee boxes and we don't have that time uh, to cut them out and you can buy them by the truckload so much cheaper. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with Ross Rounds. You're buying on your level where I'm buying See, I told it, one of my students today, how much you paying for a frame? He says, $2 or something. I says, we're buying them shipped to the house for 60 cents. Number mm -hmm. one. See. But, well, you know, we had talked once before as a group of going yeah. together and buying a pallet or whatever yeah. so we could get that kind of a rate. And I still think that's a good idea if we could find somebody that had space to, to hold them, yeah. you know, because uh, you definitely get a big price break that way. Well, if you're going to do with the plastic foundation, uh, you could go with Acorn. Uh, Stephen talked to the owner of the company out there, and if you buy in bulk, you could get them frames for like, I think the last that we got was 53 or 64 cents for the mediums and the deeps. Yeah. You know, like Man Lake sells the same stuff, and I think it's a dollar 
dollar forty a sheet, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm pretty well known for uh, either no wax, no foundation, or mm -hmm. uh, no plastic. Mine's all as natural as I can get it, and and it's what my customer base that I've developed is that natural market. And so I don't use plastic frames. I don't use any of that stuff. The only plastic I use is drone frames, you know, to do drone pulls. Yeah. Well, see here, the students today, they mentioned, uh, how come we have some plastic in our hive? My thing is natural and I make my own foundation. But mm -hmm. I had to explain to the guy, I said, now we're on the four wheeler and we went back and it's 80 degrees out here and you've got a two inch honey band and you hit a bump, what's gonna happen? The frame is on the bottom of the, the new. And yeah. what turned Steven off? Now he runs plastic. He says, I can hit them bumps twice as fast and it don't hurt it. So yeah. he's got yeah, we... his reputation on the plastic, you know, right. service, where yeah. I'm building mine on natural, you know, stuff. So yeah, and a, and a lot of people want that now because yeah. of, uh, you know, everything you read in the news, nothing at all wrong with plastic. I'm just talking about selling it to customers. Right. And, you know, you do have to kind of cater to what they want and what they, the, the catchphrases of the moment, I guess. But right. uh, yeah, it, uh, a lot of people around here use plastic because of our hot summers. And same thing, like you say, and you go to pull a frame up to do an inspection and you tilt it the wrong way and that whole thing falls out on the ground because it's too warm too hot from the heat. Um, and so, yeah, plastic holds up a lot better. Well, I had hives down, we got a location in Waycross, I think it was two and a half or three years ago. We hit record 101. And I mm -hmm. went through the bee yard and we had honey, look like water coming out of the front of the hive, where mm -hmm. the hive was collapsing because the honey was new comb. And if it had brood in it once cycle or two cycles, it got the strength, but you know, yeah. We do a volume where we don't have old comb. Yeah. Ooh. Well, and they can maintain temperature in a hive. Mine are in sun. I don't have any shade. You're in shady tree areas, but I don't have any trees, so I don't have that option. And so it gets right hot out here in July and August, and yeah. um, it can be hard on them. They It can get to the point where, you know, they keep it at 95, but if it's 100 outside, they they can cool it a few degrees but not much more than that so mm -hmm. it, it does become a problem if you have a long period of heat especially so yep. yeah that's all okay. okay over to where is he jay gilmer go ahead jay hey don hey uh on the uh junk house you're just taking and setting 10 frame boxes there, and then you move it. Anytime you run into a junk frame, you're just moving that one over there. You can use right? eight frames, 10 frames, whatever you want to call out of your hive. You See, we want to produce a quality nuke, and if it's got too much drone, we throw it in the, the drone in the junk box. So the worst comes the worst. You have eight frames in there, and then you go back in eight to 10 days, and here you got eight frames with 30 or 40 cells in each one. Yeah, you'll find the good cells make you some queens. So, you got these little girls out there; they're grafting for you without having to pay them. I like that. <laughs> good. Huh? Now we uh, today I was doing some teaching. I had a couple in the yard, and on some of my new nukes, they were not drawing out. Which I used the plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not drawing the comb out. They were like, pulling it out and then laying up underneath it and stuff. And yeah. We had them, I had them go ahead and just clean it off and start fresh. But if I'd have thought about the junk box, that would have been a whole lot better. Just go put it in there and then started a basically a queen sale going. All right. What you, you can do is take a five frame box. We've got several in our bee yards that we don't have a entrance hole. They're just a nailed on bottom or a stapled bottom. And it's a five uh -huh. frame standard box. And I had a student today, so what are you going to do with this frame? It was plastic, and just like you said, it had double comb on it. So I uh -huh. went over and I showed him, take your hive tool, scrape it all off. We carry a wire brush in the four-wheeler, and we brushed it a little bit. And I have a block of beeswax, which is about uh, an inch and a half thick. And it, it actually is in a, from a bread mold, and it's got mm -hmm. square corners on it. So I stood it up, and I rubbed it back and forth. I said, you see how it's changed in color from black to grayish looking? You get that much wax on it, and then you put it in a hive, a good strong hive. They'll draw it out like brand new, and it's like nothing. 
that's I switched over to the acre and uh, plastic frames this year, and they're double dip. They've got. I mean, when you pick it up, you just tell the difference in the wax on them. Uh, and and boy, they're drawing it out. You'll see a difference in it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, we was I had, using a little uh, sponge roller and rolling them, but as tight uh -huh. as I am, I found out it's using too much wax. Okay. See, I get thirty dollars a pound for my wax, so right. if I could cut the the cost there by rubbing the wax on there and getting the same effect. I'm going to go with it's going to work the best. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just two other comments, right quick. Okay. They they had made a comment about putting stuff on Facebook about you know their boxes being painted or using boardman feeders and they were getting blasted on stuff. And I said, look, back up. Look at what Don's doing. Look at the ones that's making money at it, and see what they're doing. All these others that are making these comments on stuff, they've got one or two hives, and <laughs> they're telling what they've heard in places or think they might have known. Uh, but I told her, I said, you ask 10 beekeepers, you're going to get 12 or 14 different answers. That's the way uh, you make money, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's – and that's what I appreciate about these chats. I get to hear what you're doing making money with it. Uh, the other one is for Greg, Byr Greg Burns. I bought some of the uh, lids from him or the snap-ins for the buckets. Mm -hmm. Man, that works great. <laughs> you mean the plugs? The plugs. Yeah. So, yeah, we, no, I'm just having a hard time finding my bucket. business today because uh, they was asking about the plugs. Yeah, it, it really works good. So, oh, how long in the? Hello, Greg. <laughs> On the, uh, just talking about the sugar siren. I've got the five to one mixture that I'm buying now. Mm -hmm. Do I have any problem with it fermenting? Mm -hmm. No, nope, not that thick, but now. If you're running right now, this kind, I would cut. Are you putting it in totes? I'm, I'm buying totes or putting it in totes, and then I'm putting it in the gallon buckets or in jars. And then okay. I've got if, five gallon buckets out feeders too. Right now, if you've got a five to one, I would take on your tote, I would put 10 gallons of hot water in it and, and stir it. Now, I, I talked about that PVC mixer that I made, it's under 10 bucks. And all you do is hook an air chuck to it. It's a five-foot piece of PVC. It's got a glue-on bushing, then a step-down bushing from glue-on to threads, and then from the threads to uh, pipe threads for an air chuck to thread it in. The fittings okay. and everything and the glue, the whole shooting match was 10 bucks. It yeah. saves you buying a recircling pump, or I was talking about getting electric trolling motors as another way to mix it, but you know, you're looking at a $25 vest versus 10 and then the electric trolling motor will gunk up if you don't clean it right away. Right. You know me, I'm going to come up with something cheap. Save you <laughs> some money. <laughs> yeah. So so this time of year, I need to drop it down to what, about a 4 to 1 or 3 to 1? <laughs> well, I think they'll pull it a little bit better right now. But the temperature up right now in South Georgia here, it's wanting to, it gets hot and wants to get gummy. And it doesn't want to come out of a pail as good. Okay. All uh, right. I'll try that and see if it works better. Now, you can use that heat tree oil, and that's what we're doing in our totes right now. We're mixing up that concentrate and dumping it in the totes. Uh -huh. we put a little bit of spearmint and a little bit of tea tree oil, and it helps build them up. To stay away from the lemongrass this time of the year so you don't get robbing. Right. Okay. I'll I'll try that too. See how that works. That's all I've got. Okay. Okay. And over to Jaina. Go ahead, Jaina. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I had a question. So, um, I I I had the top bar, and then I did two splits. One, uh, I lost some bees because they swarm. So right now, so it's like four weeks ago, I had two nook and my main beehive. And I panic, I look through this, it was like three four, four, three, four weeks ago, and I look through it and I know, and I, I knew I put the cap uh, queen cells there and uh, then I kind of didn't see it there anymore. 
and I say like, oh no, my my uh, the, my bees don't have a queen. All three of them. I check the big one, my major beehive, and it was a lot of combs with the honey. So I kind of like was little down because uh, I didn't want to lose the queen. So I called the Rex, and he brought me the queen uh, that I bought from him, uh, Italian queen. And when he was here, like two weeks ago, we went through the uh, through my hive, through my two nook hives, and he said, like, oh, you have a queen in the one because. I could see the freshly laid eggs. So I think I panicked because I didn't know that it takes uh, the, the virgin queen for like one month to, you know, up to one month to come back if she goes out mating, you know. And um, so I guess she came back and started laying the egg. So now it my question- take a month, you know. You know, on a top bar hive or any type hives, when I try to teach my students, mm -hmm. if you took one of the bars off or the cover and or exposed a little bit of the comb, the first three to five seconds, you can tell if you have a queen in there or you have a queen cell. If they start buzzing right away, then you're more than likely you don't have a queen in there. But okay. you should. Now, you might not be able to see the eggs, which... A lot of people, if they get up in our age, they can't see. So I teach my students to take a frame where the brood is at and get the sun on your back and look straight in. Put your hand in the middle of the frame, and the heat of your hand will move the bees. Just look for white milk. If you see white milk, you've got a queen in there. She's laying. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like when I look through the top bar, I didn't see any brood, and I said, like, all honey you know so like, where is the brood no baby bees nothing and uh so now i check them today so mm -hmm. i have two nooks my question is i i, I finish i send you the pictures i just finished my uh, long langston hive with i have a, another uh addition for the medium super for honey now i have i would like to move some of those bees into that long strong mm -hmm. okay and now, should I keep the, uh, the hive with that Italian queen, or should I leave, should I keep only the hive with my feral, my, I call them feral bees, that I got them from outside? Do they both work? Yeah. Then so why kill a good thing? Yeah, but okay. I don't know, my, my, my friend, one of my friend told me, like, don't keep the Italian queen because, you know, you will, who, who knows how they treat the queen and she will bring the bad genetics or so I don't know. No, not necessarily. But, you know, if, where, whereabouts do you live? Dallas. Dallas? Except, All mm -hmm. right. Now, if you don't see no brood, you could be getting honey bound. If there is a heavy honey flow on, the bees bring the nectar in and you don't have a place for the bees to lay, then you won't see no eggs, you're not going to see brood because they keep backfilling. As one bee hatches, they replace it with nectar. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got other frames, you can exchange it or take one from the outside that don't have much that's drawed comb and move it to the middle and then go back in about four days and then look and see if you got eggs in there. Mm -hmm. But more than likely, this time of the year where you're at, you're getting a lot of backfilled nectar in it. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 I am pretty full now. My, my main uh, top bar, I, I just want to read. I, in the future, I want, I don't want that top bar. I just want to have my uh, length strong, long one that I have. I will have two separate colonies. Because if you, really if you're asking about the queens, you know, if you can work either of those hives, it doesn't matter what kind of queen you got. If the hive's mm -hmm. gentle and you can work it, I wouldn't get rid of it. You know, okay. you have to do what you can work. Don't okay. listen to a neighbor who says an Italian's bad or it's Italian's yeah. good. Okay. If yeah. you can work it, don't kill it. Okay. No, I am not going to kill it, but I cannot have more than two hives. I live in the city, so well, I have to uh, give one hive somewhere, you know, so. If you go to church, ask members of the church. Maybe they have <laughs> a, a little farm. They could put a hive or two out there. Yeah. That's yeah. a good, good place to check right there. 
Yeah, my 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 friend, he had like eight hives, but he has them like in the like hour and a half from Dallas, you know. It's quite distance, but he has them in the forest, you yeah. know, that the bees are kind of suffering. They don't have a lot of food, you know, so. And um, so I don't know. I Yeah, I told him that we we need to look somewhere closer, somewhere in the. You could put, even in Dallas, you have you checked on rooftop beekeeping? Mm -hmm. In downtown Atlanta, there is a lot of beehives on top of the buildings, mm -hmm. you know, and no uh, one can yeah. see them, no one complains, yeah. and they make honey. Yeah, yeah. Another thought for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but I live in Plano, and Plano is like, we cannot have a chicken here because, like, we, you know, we are like the city, and we cannot have the bees. And Go so to downtown Dallas. I know they got tall buildings there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're a beekeeper. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm not taking no for an answer. I do what I want and what I love. So, all right. Thank you so much. So I am going to keep my Italian clean. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Over to Joshua. Go ahead, Josh. All right. Hey, Don. Yeah. So I have a few questions here. Um, I was having some issues with, with the bees building comb on the bottom of my feeders, my hive top feeders. Okay. Uh, when you build your feeders, what's the, the bee space from the bottom of the, the edge of the, the feeder to up to the, 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 um, your bottom board? Like I use a quarter inch Luan. Okay. From, from the edge of the Luan to the bottom edge of the, the wood, it's on, on the outside of the box itself. You should have mm -hmm. no more than three eighths of an inch. Now, if you got an extra deep, frame rest on your box that's going to increase that you might be half inch five eighths there and then you're going to get burr comb right yeah i'm pretty sure my feeders are not over three eighths i'm thinking some of the boxes that are kind of go to... pardon if the box the frame rest itself is a little deeper what you can mm -hmm. do is lay a frame at 90 degrees across the top of the frames and then look underneath the frame or you could use a level, or you could use a square, just something straight edge, and look at the distance from the top of your frame to the edge of whatever you're measuring. If it's exceeding three eighths of an inch, and then you've got a box above it that's got three eighths, now you've got three quarters of an inch. It's guaranteed you're gonna have some burr comb. Yeah, sure. So you can either shave the box down a little bit, or shave the your hive, your, your feeder box, or your uh, sure. super. Or your yeah. high box. I wouldn't say drop that down. If you do, just take a 64th, just enough to true the edges up. Because mm -hmm. over time, if you start nicking with your hive tool, you want to trim it just a little bit to get a smooth edge there again. I would put up with yeah. the burr comb rather than have too short of a frame rest, personally. I see. Yeah, sure. All right. And also, um, I had um, kind of an unusual problem. Um, I mixed up some two to one recently and I didn't think it was crystallizing other years, but this year I'm having issues with it crystallizing in the feeder. Um, Are like, you boiling the water? Pardon? Are you boiling the sugar water? Uh, I'm not boiling it. I'm just heating it um, just below boiling just to melt it, you know, to speed up the, the, dissolving process. I use cold water and stir it up and then let it sit for a while and you come back and stir it again. But if you heat up sugar uh -huh. water, it's going to end up, you know, if you, especially if you get the temperature too hot, you're going to start uh -huh. making fondant or you're going to start crystallizing the, the sugar. Okay, sure. All right, and then one more question. Uh, on the incubator, um, to, to incubate um, queen cells, mm -hmm. what um, ideal temperature to run on that? I like to run between 92 and 93. I mean, you could run 90, but uh, the the smaller, the cheaper the incubators, I would run at least 92, 93. Sure. And you, if you're gonna use like the chicken incubator, like tractor supply, I would suggest get an old t-shirt and cut it and put a little glue or two-face tape on it and line that bottom piece with that t-shirt or a piece of felt. That's gonna keep your plastic uh, cell protectors from sliding all over in your queen cups. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Well, thanks a lot. That's all I have. All right. 
Okay, we got one more question. Uh, Stephen Dunn, go ahead. Hey, Don. Hey. Hey. Um, so I was just wondering, me and my dad put a, uh, put the packages in. This was a while ago, but we went back the next day and almost half of them had moved, but left to the queen, but they moved into a different hive. Did you, what's the reason behind that? Well, did you, what time of the day did you put them in and how much sugar water and you sprayed them down? There's a lot of little things that could cause that. Did you install them with all new comb? Or did you install them on a frame that had honey in it? Or a frame that had brood on it? Oh. So uh, we put them with the braid that, uh, frame that had brood in them. Okay, if you had a frame with brood in them, and you installed them on there, and they're still leaving, then you might have had a queen on that frame that you put in that box. And then when you're going to yeah. put out a lot of packages at one time, I would suggest put one one area of your bee yard and then another one and give it a little time because you put if you don't wet the bees down enough or spray them, they're going to put too many bees in the air. And if you've got a queen that gets out of the cage too early, you know, you're going to have bees in the air and they can drift. All right. That was my only question. Okay. All right. Thank Okay. Keep up the good work on that graft, and you was doing good at the house. <laughs> Tell Daddy start paying you like you're supposed to now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him a big head now. <laughs> <He's doing good. laughs> First time getting a good good result. I'm proud of him. Okay, that'll do it for tonight then. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Don. If you guys want to stick around for the after chat, uh, just be sure to mute yourself first. And thanks, Don. Okay, everybody, appreciate you showing up, and we'll see you in two weeks. And write those questions down so when you come on the chat, you have something to talk about. All right, we'll see everybody. Thank you. Bye, Don. Thanks, Don.